You'd think that with the passing of a year since the previous spirit quest, that chaos would no longer be among the justifications for this one. However, as current horrifying events continue to occur and even outshine the previous year, I think back onto the martyr that set everything into motion. But I also remember that Greyshop has been sending me hiking gear to do review videos on ever since that previous ruck. This recently caught up with me and I had to hide in the blast zone for a few days because the CEO of Greyshop, Sergey Makarov, is threatening to skin me and use my hide to produce affordably priced chess rigs. All this because I was slow to do a review on an Attack 5 60 liter backpack produced by SSO. Receiving a threat from such an internationally sanctioned group of people is not something to take lightly. Fearing for my life, I grabbed not only my rifle, but also the heavy duty rucksack as I retreated into what is literally Hyperborea. This trek is much more technical than the previous vertically challenging hike. There are no water sources for about halfway and the weather stayed at a consistent 85 degrees throughout the hottest week of the summer. This meant that I would have to carry my own water in addition to filters and that I would have to cover my skin as much as possible. I wore a lightweight SSO partisan suit in colors that matched my ruck and only packed a single meal. This hike was also a day shorter than the previous, but the added weight from the water and other factors pushed the weight to 52 pounds, so at least the ruck weight remained consistent from the last hike. What's nice about this backpack is that the bottom zipper panel means that I can access my rifle easier. Also the enabling fact that the rucksack is a bit bigger than my old one, so I don't have to store the weapon conspicuously strapped to the outside. I also brought Tony, who was lugging around camera equipment and a drone he borrowed from some Instagrammer. Tony also brought his own sustainment gear, and a rifle. And I was very thankful to have someone accompanying me, as not only would this hiking video be not filmed entirely on my phone, but I wouldn't be mistaken as an isolated and solitary Sigma male, as unlike one of them, I do get lonely. This hike started pleasantly, as the ashes that settled in the blast zone have long since given way to fragrant wildflowers that you can actually smell as you walk by. I'm also not really making a joke when I call this place the blast zone, I mean that, as this fantastic moonscape terrain was created out of a 24 megaton eruption that blew sideways out of this active volcano. It carved a lake, buried a lodge, and in the periphery of this zone, there are stacks of dead trees from the forests that collapsed. In the zone itself, however, there isn't anything. Clear sightlines for miles. This meant that there was very little cover from Musa's hike, and as the heat of the day had already set in when I set off, I knew that I'd be thoroughly cooked later. I set a fast pace, taking water from a 3 liter camel pack as I went. I didn't stop to replenish water as I crossed the rocky snowmelt streams as it was still early and it seemed like there would be at least one stream at around the midpoint of the hike. Once I'd crossed the actual blast zone area, I took a break and mixed some chocolate milk powder before continuing on to a more vertical section of the hike. A few times the quick release buckles on my attacker were pressed somehow. A 50 pound ruck losing a strap is pretty annoying and could cause injury. I'm not sure why this happened, but it repeated itself once more through the hike. I might just need to secure them a little better or simply tie them off, and this could have very well been my fault if I had pressed the mechanism as I went. Besides that issue, the backpack is very accommodating. This is obviously a military style backpack and as such, the ruck has a frame on the inside. It's padded, and it's redundant in straps and it's robust fabric. It needs to be like this to carry sharp metal equipment like cruise serve weapons and ammo that would usually add up to somewhere in the ballpark of twice the weight of what I've loaded. The trade-off for the ability to commit nefarious acts and support the carrying of heavy equipment is the empty ruck at 8 pounds. And though this ruck works as a hiking backpack, its robust nature means that for hikers that want to emphasize the lightweight meta, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to use this particular ruck. However, packs made of lightweight materials would be destroyed from serious work. I would honestly recommend all of the rucks on Grey Shop for heavy duty work, and if you LARP you already know that all of these rucksacks are used by Russian special forces. On the hill section I was getting a little bit tired and stopped again to eat my oatmeal cookie. That extra sugar pushed me forward and eventually these fingers we were crossing gave way to a steep gorge that had rocks ambiently falling down the cliffs, kicking up dust. This impressive landmark was our sign to switch gears and find some place to camp.
But first, dinner, as the one MRE that I had packed was a very special one. I'd like to give a big thanks to Rap with two Ps for sending me a much hyped pizza MRE. After heating that precious square slice alongside the cobbler, I can honestly say that the pizza itself, while perfectly fine, just isn't tomato-y enough? It doesn't really have much flavor and tasted just like a piece of soft bread, which isn't bad. To me, the real highlight of the meal is the cobbler. The warm, intense blueberry taste and dark cherries were very filling, and just what I needed after that long stretch. The snack items I'd also been having along the way came from this pizza MRE, and among USGI MREs, it's definitely one of the better menus. 8 out of 10. Now that the sun was setting and we'd picked out a great camping spot, it was finally time to shed some serious weight and do some target shooting. My rifle was milled, suppressed, and 30 caliber, so I was just not enjoying that extra weight. With the can and the forest killing the decibels so as not to disturb other hikers, I put my Wolverine suppressor through its paces. But now it was time to bed under a clear, starry sky. I was exhausted, and the strain from the ruck had taken its toll. This caused weird dreams. We woke up, drunk a little espresso, and gulped down the last of our water. This was our turnaround point, and we knew that it would be a long while before the first dream. I had spilt one of the mini water bottles along the way, and had I not managed to do that, it would have been the perfect amount to ease this suffering. But the situation wasn't serious. We trudged on before it got too hot, and saw some strange looking dogs along the way before finally making it to water. I was absolutely exhausted and had set my pace too high, so I really slumped down here, drinking as much as I could to recover. When I got home, my throat was really hurting, so I kinda wonder if silt was getting through my filter at this point. We carried on, but the final little anomaly to this trip was that I somehow embarrassingly lost the trail on the last quarter stretch of it. This also wasn't a big deal, but it showed that I was pretty exhausted at this point, maybe even getting a little heat struck. So I again stopped for water, munching on some emery crackers, and just taking my time to recover. At this point, my face was starting to crack open from the sun, and I wished I could just teleport out of Hyperborea. And that was that. With a buddy, I had successfully traversed through the blast zone. The tough attack backpack hadn't caused any rubbing pain and proved more than adequate for the journey. But next time I would be topping off my water constantly, and I'd use some damn sunscreen. I hope this long video provides you with some insight into backpacks and inspires you to take advantage of the natural beauty around you before it, or you, are gone forever. Thank you for your support during this difficult time, and rest assured, the end is nigh.